The last shows, I was told to cool off. I wasn't put on the shows. That was uh, Commissioner Jim Cornette's idea. And he said, Colt Cabana, don't show up. Cool off. Cool off? How am I supposed to cool off? You know what I did? Sit home in my apartment, Chicago, in the corner, Indian style, and sat there and thought. I didn't cool off, but I thought. I did a lot of thinking. And what came to mind was life. What happens in life? Story with life. Where it goes, where it ends. What's in between and what is in between? Some good, some bad. But there are instances, birthdays, deaths. May 6th, I was born, my birthday. I'll always remember that. June 17th, I stepped into a wrestling ring. I'll always remember that. December 17th, I was almost murdered. Murdered. In a wrestling ring, almost. And you think that's, that's a lie? You think that's funny? You don't take me seriously? You think murdered in a wrestling ring? Come on, Colt, huh? Let me give you a little history lesson. London, England, King Kong Kirk murdered by Big Daddy. Amarillo, Texas, Man Mountain Mike was wrestling in the ring with Mike DiBiase, fell to his death in a professional wrestling ring. Dead, deceased, no longer. On December 17th, <laughs> I remember like it was yesterday, homicide. I was out there saving Steve Carino and he poured Drano down my throat. And I felt it. And I felt it in my lips and I felt it in my eyes and on my face. And, and then I felt it go down my throat. And, and that was attempted murder. And if you don't believe me, ask my doctor. Ask my parents who got the phone call after that. Ask anybody. Murder. Homicide. I will never forget that date. Never. <laughs> and now, now what am I supposed to do, huh? Huh? What am I supposed to do? Can't sleep anymore. I don't, I don't talk to my friends. I told you this before. I don't shave. I haven't had a haircut. I haven't groomed. I haven't taken a shower. I just sit in my apartment and I sit there and I think of instances in life like this one. And it's all that's in my head. And what am I supposed to do now? What am I supposed to do? Just leave? Just leave the sport? The passion that I have, lead professional wrestling, and let him be the winner? Let him go on to the next guy? And maybe try to murder someone else, or hurt someone else, or take away their life, their pride, their respect? What am I supposed to do? No. No, Homicide. That's not me, that's not Colt Cabana. I got on the plane this morning, and I want to wrestle you, Homicide. I don't know how I got on the plane, but I did, knowing that I would work with you. I would work into your head, I would work into your soul, I would work like the wrestler that I am into your head, but no, you need to be 100%, 100%, you don't want to wrestle me, you don't want to fight me, well fine, fine, I'll take on whatever you want to throw at me, you give me a Rottweiler, you give me whatever you got, you put them in there and you tell them, you tell them to fight Colt Cabana as hard as they can. Because I'm gonna get in their ring, and I'm gonna give, and I'm gonna lead by example. Because what I'm gonna do to them is a message to you. So whoever you wanna bring, whoever you want. What are you doing here? Turn the camera off, we gotta talk. Let's go. Huh? It is February the 11th, 2006, and ROH returns to Sports Plus in Long Island, New York, in the middle of a blizzard, apparently 
This is going to be unscripted too. I'm Woody Ritter alongside Jimmy Bauer, and we're about to kick things off here with singles competition. Well, you're right about unscripted too. In fact, I'm not even supposed to be doing broadcasting tonight, but there are a number of flights that were canceled, a number of reasons why wrestlers could not make tonight's show due to the blizzard. And among those that couldn't make it tonight are Dave Frazak, Alex Shelley, Jay Lethal, Loki, Homicide, Matt Seidel, and Claudio Castanoli. Now ROH officials have been scrambling. We've come up with some big stuff. We have a huge surprise for tonight to make up for the nose shows. And in fact, we've offered the fans here tonight that if they want a refund after the third match, if they don't like what they see, they can get that refund and go home. It's the first three matches for free. This is going to be a very special night, a very unique night. Unscripted two ROH officials pulling out their hair all day, trying to come up with some stuff. And wow, I think we've got quite a show for you. What an absolute mess trying to make our way here to Long Island this afternoon. Snow falling about 12 o'clock this afternoon. It has not stopped, and they are predicting it is not going to stop until well into tomorrow. But we thank the fans that have braved the weather. Wait a second. Well, we're supposed to have two students from the ROH Wrestling School right now, Mitch Franklin and Kelly Primo, getting a shot on the main show after all the no-shows. And, and here's Adam Pierce. Not quite sure what he wants here. Before this crap gets started, I got something I want to say. Just hold your horses, pigeons. within Ring of Honor, a big surprise is supposed to take place tonight. So much so that they have made the decision that a few idiot morons don't like it after the third match, you can hide till your ass is out of here. Now, if there's anything that I've learned from my time in Ring of Honor, it's that Mr. Jim Cornette is all about seizing opportunity. Much like I did when I beat the crap out of Necro Butcher back in Ohio. And one thing I know about opportunity is that nobody in this building wants to see the Mulkey Brothers wrestle. So the best thing that both of you could do would be to leave the ring right now and save your asses the worst beating of all time. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Adam Pierce, check this out for a second. You're a little new to the scene, so allow me to introduce myself. Here, but you see, we're not afraid of anybody, especially a 1970s blast from the past like you, Adam Pierce. Adam Pierce obviously taking exception to what Kelly Primo had to say, and he is taking it out on these two youngsters from the ROH Wrestling School. Mitch Franklin tossed to the floor, Kelly Primo in the ring. Adam Pierce taking his robe off. Apparently, we're going to have an impromptu three way dance. Well, Adam Pierce is always looking to take advantage of opportunities here in ROH. And he sees an opportunity right now and an opportunity coming up with whatever that surprise is. And what a big foul drive on Kelly Primo. He just spiked him right on top of his head. Cover. Mitch Franklin makes the save, not doing much damage to Scrapfire Adam Pierce. Almost looks annoyed in the ring. It just slapped the taste right out of Franklin's mouth. Unscripted too, anything can happen. This is supposed to be Franklin versus Kelly Primo, their big shot on this show. Adam Pierce, though, he is absolutely destroying both men. He's trying to impress Commissioner Jim Cornette. And I think he did that on the last weekend at ROH Raid when he beat up Necro Butcher. But what's this? Big splash and an impressive victory for Adam Pierce, and you better believe that he's not done yet. Pleased to meet you. As I was saying, opportunity knocks, the script that he answers. Therefore, I'm going to sit my ass at ringside and watch the magic happen.
think, huh, that I would be low, I would be depressed, huh? That my boy, Alex Shelley's flight was canceled. Can you believe that? Hey. Canceled? <laughs> but you know, the funny thing is, Brian Danielson, tonight, I have a huge surprise. Oh, maybe I can, I can get my title. Oh, no, 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 no. You, you wait till the anniversary show. Not tonight? Not tonight. But tonight I have a big, big surprise for Brian Danielson. You wait, you might even be shocked yourself. <laughs>
good. I love, bro, I love you. Look, look, I came here, I came here to try to talk some sense into not only you, but the Rottweilers. You're not the same Colt Cabana I used to know. I was in Chicago for an entire week and you don't return my calls. Okay, when your mom is calling me to find out what's wrong with you, I think we have a problem. Okay? Now I know you don't like homicide and I know he doesn't like you, but this has got to stop. Okay? This has got to stop. I want Colt Cabana back. I know I used to tell you to be serious. Look at me. I know I used to tell you. Listen, punk. I don't know why you're here. Well, I understand that. I don't know who allowed you to be here or the reasons that you're here, but this is my business now. This is my promotion. I don't need you telling me what to do. I don't need you calling me and giving me advice that came from a higher power somewhere else. Maybe you got other business, but I don't need you right now. Julius Smokes, he offered a challenge from the Grim Reaper and I'm gonna take it. If I can't get homicide, and I'm gonna beat the shit out of Grim Reaper. I appreciate your kind words, but my father's not my father figure anymore, and I don't need you as my father figure. You can do other business. I don't need you right now, CM Punk. I'm gonna wrestle Grim Reaper myself. I know you have good intentions. Go take your intentions to somewhere else. Just do something else, but out of my business. As far as anybody else goes that wants to maybe jump me from behind, or I, I did think I saw Prince Nana a second ago. I think everybody knows I marched to the beat of my own drummer. And like any good worker, he always brings his gear with him. Mine's in my trunk. If anybody has a problem with me, take it up with me personally. I'll fight you here tonight. Let's go! Recovered from the Steve Carino injury at Steel Cage Warfare, and Homicide has stated that he wants to wait until he is 100% before he finishes the feud against Colt Cabana. So, right now, Cabana is against another member of the Rockwilers making his in ring debut here for ROH with the Grim Reefer. Julius Smokes on the outside going to town on Cabana. He had that back cock. Cabana saw him at the last second, but turned his back on Reefer, allowing him to take the advantage. But now, Cabana coming back on Smokes with a big elbow on the floor. Watch out for Reefer, he can fly. Somersault off the top for Reefer, onto the floor, wiping out Cabana. Both men down here on the floor of Long Island. You know, it's really interesting to note that CM Punk, I, I don't know what his reasons are for coming back here, but it does look like one of them was to help out his friend Cole Cabana here. 
Cabana has not been the same since this feud with Homicide started, and, and Cabana has really been mentally falling apart ever since the Drano incident at Final Battle. I mean, Punk even saying that Cabana's own mother is calling Punk to, to see what's wrong with Cabana. I mean, Cabana used to like to joke around. I mean, he's completely serious now, and, and not only that, I mean, he's, he has his vicious streak as he's showing here with Reefer. Once again, Reefer hard to the guardrail. Look at the face of Paul Cabana. You talk about him being all business. No more fun and games. I guess someone trying to pour liquid, excuse me, Drano gel down your throat after trying to cut your tongue out and choke you to death with a coat hanger could change your perspective on things. Well, you saw that promo from Cabana earlier tonight. It definitely has. I haven't seen Cabana smile in months. And he used to be the, really the life of the locker room. As you see Reefer over the guardrail. Good times and great memories out the window for Colt Cabana. He is on a mission to get revenge on Homicide. Not 100% here tonight. It's Grim Reefer in his place. And Cabana is taking out all his frustrations on Reefer. And what about Adam Pierce trying to make his name at CM Punk's expense? And Prince Nana getting to, coming out laughing at Punk, too. Of course, Punk had that intense feud against the Embassy last year. It looks like Nana has not forgotten about that. Well, I'm actually at that tremendous matchup in Chicago with nowhere to run. The steel cage match with Jimmy Ray. And right now, it's Kurt Cabana again with smokes on the outside, brandishing that aluminum bat. Cabana using a chair to fend him off for the time being. And now going right back to work on Reefer on the floor. You know, one thing I will say about Colt Cabana is that most men would have walked away at this point. They would have walked away after almost having their life taken from them, after almost being murdered in the ring, after tasting Drano. And Cabana just keeps coming back for more and more, and he's not afraid to fight any member of the Rockfilers, including Grim Reefer right here. Fires Reefer back into the ring. Again, you see the look of just sheer disgust and determination on the face of Colt Cabana here. A man possessed in this ring now. He is incensed. He is just driven at all costs to take the Rottweilers, and in particular Homicide, out of this sport. The, the bottom line is that the issue between Colt Cabana and Homicide has to be resolved soon. The feud has to end soon. I mean, even Jim Cornette gave these two a cooling off period at the last Ohio show. He gave them the weekend off so that hopefully things can settle down a little. But look at Cabana. He's as intense as ever. That cooling off period didn't do anything for him. It did absolutely nothing but give him some time to rest and recuperate from some of the beatings that these two have dished out to each other. But it has done nothing to quell the absolute hatred between Colt Cabana and Homicide. And I still say, I said it before, I say it again, this feud is not going to end until one of these guys is hurt and hurt Ben. I gotta agree with that, Lenny. And so right now you see Cabana, look at that, just ripping at the face of, of Reefer. Maybe he's trying to pull out his tongue. That's exactly what it looked like, trying to go for the tongue of Grim Reefer. No scissors on Cole Cabana this time. They try to cut his tongue out a few months back and a little bit of a taste of their own medicine for the Wild Wilds. But it has been all Cole Cabana, and again, ripping at the tongue. Absolutely no mercy from Cole Cabana. And I do miss the old Cole Cabana. I mean, he was always good for a joke. He was always making everyone smile. And, and look at him. Absolutely intense, overcome with anger. Lord Irish whip to the corner, follows him in. Butt butt in the corner, connects. Off the ropes. Caught with a back heel kick, though. Nicely done by Reefer, taking Cabana off his feet. We've seen Reefer with the Rockwellers in ROH, but he has never gotten his chance in the ring. This is Reefer's first match, and now he's finally getting an opportunity. To make the most of it as everyone here is at unscripted trading shots right in the center of the ring with Cabana. Slightly getting the better of the exchange, but Cabana's calling for more. He was yelling, come on, homicide. He's doing it again. He's thinking Reefer's homicide. Nicely done by Reefer. Has him in that cross face, arm locked between the legs, cranking back on the throat. Cabana trying to crawl his way towards the ropes and force the break here. Don Sinclair right there checking on Cabana. This guy he's going to get to his feet. Nice show of strength by Cabana here. Just dumping Reef over the top. His back crashing on the apron and he hits the floor. Once again, no mercy, no remorse from Kurt Cabana. Smoke shouting encouragement to Reef for homicide off the ropes. Cabana, big drop kick there. I got homicide on the brain here. 
Uh, so does Cole Cabana. Julius Smokes with almost a stunned look at, at, at the intensity we're seeing from Cole Cabana now. Smokes trying to buy his man some time. Reefer struggling to get to his feet. Smokes trying to help him up. Cabana still in the ring. Boys grabbing Reefer by the head, dragging him back in the center of the ring. Our right hand across the back. Elbow to the top of the head. Cabana's going to climb the ropes. Has Reefer in the corner, fighting his way out. Top to the chest by Reefer. And plants him with the DDT out of the corner. High impact there, this could be it. Only able to get two as Cabana gets that right shoulder up. And right now, it's a test of wheels, it's a test of strength. Who wants it more? And once again, look at Cabana's face. Still covered with anger, still that scowl on his face. Look at him just absorb those kicks right to the face and almost didn't even face him. Oh, he's in a zone. He's in a different world right now. Firing away right hands. Rocks Reefer against the ropes. Fires him off one more time. He's been in that different world since the Drano incident. Reefer through the legs, goes behind, but Cabana just tosses him over the top. And there's the rally in. He thrilled him with it. That's it. And Cabana comes up fired off. He's not done with the rap bars. The issue between Cole Cabana and Homicide has to be settled soon. Oh, does, does Reyes really need that 
kind of help against somebody like Kid Mikazi. Nothing against Kid Mikazi. He's a great upcomer. He's got a world of potential. But, but right now, Reyes is dominating. Does he really need outside interference like that? Absolutely not. But that's the Rottweiler's way. When you see one, you see another. Couple of kicks there, but Reyes hangs on. Planted by Mikazi. Nicely done. Hooks the right. That could have been it. This win would put Kid Mikazi immediately on the map. Him and Jason Blade have been impressive in tag team competition. Because this would be Mikazi's biggest victory to date yet, though. Ducks the knee. Reyes catches him. And there it is, the Dragon Sleeper. He's got it locked in right in the center of the ring. Pantara right there. Nowhere for Mikazi to go. His only chance is to reach the ropes, and he's nowhere close to them. Reyes cinching down, and that's going to be it. A good effort from Kid Mikazi, but the winning sways continue for Ricky Reyes as he looks towards the tag titles with his fellow Rockwire. to break up a pin or a submission. There is a strict 20 count on the floor. There are to be no closed fist strikes to the face. On the first... On the first closed fist, you'll be given a warning. On the second closed fist, you'll be penalized a rope break. If you have no rope breaks left, you'll be disqualified. Your title can change hands on a disqualification or a counter. You both understand these rules? Shake hands, go to your corners, make a wrestling title on the line as Nigel McGuinness puts the strap up against one half of the ROH Tag Team Champs and the former world champ, Austin Aries. This could be a very historic night. If Austin Aries is able to defeat Nigel McGuinness here and win the pure title, he will have set two records in ROH. Number one, he will be the first man to be a Grand Slam champion here in ROH, meaning he has held all three titles. And number two, he will be the first man to ever hold two ROH titles at the same time. So a lot at stake in this one. 
Very divergent styles here. Nigel likes to utilize that European style. You see it coming into play there. Nice reversal. Austin Aries, though, hanging right there, able to take control of the wrist. Aries a little bit of a high flyer, but he can go on the mat with just about anyone. McGinnis once again going for that arm, and again, Aries able to take control and reverse the hold. Nice job of counter-wrestling by Austin Aries. Austin Aries is a wrestling machine. He can do it all. Fly, mat wrestle, brawl, you name it. But right there, he got a big back elbow. Nigel caught him coming in. Aries was trying to block him, going for that arm one more time. Instead, McGinnis changed it up and fired that back elbow right to the point of the jaw of Austin Aries. Now he's going to send him out of the corner. Aries up and over out of the corner. Somersault through a little momentum. Dunks the back elbow, does Nigel, but gets caught with a Japanese arm drag. And Aries hangs right onto the arm and controls the wrist one more time. Beautifully done. That's the kind of athleticism and poise that made Austin Aries ROH world champion. And nope. he, hey, he was the one to defeat nope. Samoa Joe after the 21 month reign. And you gotta give the man a lot of credit right there. Nigel McGuinness, he has held the pure title since Dragon Game Invasion last August when he defeated Samoa Joe. And you can say what you will about some of the questionable tactics he has used, but he has been a successful pure champion and a lot of good title defenses. Like against Jay Lethal, Roderick Strong, Claudio Castanoli. Of course, Claudio, he's still not done with Nigel, but that's another issue for another time. Claudio, of course, unable to make it due to the snowstorm that has plagued the New York area all day today. Aries up and over. Oh. Nigel, though, blocked that elbow, had it scouted, nicely done. Side headlock takeover, and goes right back to that arm. Key lock in that shoulder down for a near fall. Right now, you're seeing both athletes trying to establish the pace in this one. As they, wow, nice job by Austin Aries getting out of the hole. So two divergent styles, two guys who are very well versed in mat wrestling. Aries with that head scissor cranking down. And you see him, he was pushing up there, adding to the leverage that he was using with his legs to crank down. And now Nigel trying to bridge his way out, trying to use leverage to his advantage. Aries has a quick counter to that one. Tremendous show of strength by McGinnis in the neck muscles. Able to use the bridge to force his way up. Nice job of escaping the head scissors. Fires that forearm shot right to the jaw of Aries. Nothing fancy about that, but very effective. Nigel trying some cross faces, not quite getting all of them, but still connecting nonetheless. Of course, in a pure title match, there are no close fits to the face, but those cross faces are perfectly legal. Driving the forearm between the shoulder blades. Look at the pain on the face of Aries as those legs are grapevine. You notice that Nigel is just trying to pound Aries in the meantime as well as working on those legs. Aries able to make his way back to his feet, but quickly taken right back down by Nigel. A leg drop across the throat, only able to get one. Nigel McGinnis is trying to work in some more high impact stuff, it looks like, including that leg drop. Some more stuff of impact rather than just the pretty European holds that we saw from him maybe a year ago or so. That's one of the changes in Nigel McGinnis' style since he has become pure champion. Aries flipping out. We've seen him escape a head scissors many times before, but he gets spiked right on top of his head. McGinnis plants him right on top of his head. McGinnis has this match very well scouted out so far. As now, and here we go, explosiveness from Aries. Oh, but Nigel blocked it. That's the second trademark move of Austin Aries that Nigel McGinnis has been able to counter in the early going here. Obviously, Nigel McGinnis well aware of Austin Aries and what he likes to do in specific situations within a match, and he had a counter for both of those attempts of Austin Aries, and now he's just raking at the face. There's nothing legal about that. Todd Sinclair right there, forcing him to get off the eyes. You know, Lenny, what does raking at the face have to do with pure wrestling? What does using an iron to smash your opponent in the face have to do with it either? Very true. Here's some nice pure wrestling. Noah's a mission rule hold from McGinnis. Aries trying to counter his way out of it, trying to break the leverage. Aries trying to force his way to his feet, using that free arm to rake across the bridge of the nose to free himself. Instead, McGinnis fires a forearm across the back. Snap bears him over. McGinnis off the ropes, Aries pops right back up and caught with a shoulder block. Up and over goes McGinnis. And caught with a clothesline from the left side of Aries. Almost a desperation move from Aries there. Looks like the arm's giving him a little bit of trouble. Of course, Nigel blocks uh, the elbow earlier in this match. First by McGinnis one more time, Aries off the ropes. Ducks the clothesline from Nigel. Running knee to the midsection, Nigel doesn't drop. Once again off the ropes, but connects with a boot to the midsection. And a suplex takes Aries up and over. Cover here by McGinnis. Aries able to kick out at two. Todd Sinclair right on top of the action with the two count. 
Then again, back to their feet. Aries again drives the knee to the midsection. Headlock takeover. Another reverse by McGinnis. Headstand, and there's the drop kick from Aries. The trademark drop kick off the headstand. And this time, able to connect with Maggie McGinnis, who goes to the floor. Well, there's only so long until the explosiveness and athleticism of Austin Aries will come shining through. And we have just seen it, Nigel unable to counter Austin Aries' quickness. Heat-seeking missile from Austin Aries on the floor, drives McGinnis to the guardrail. And a hard chop to the chest by Aries. Now you have to watch the 20 count on the, on the floor on the pure title matches. And if Nigel is counted out, he will lose the title. Aries, though, fires him back into the ring. McGinnis flat on his back. Aries on the apron. Springboard sent on right across the chest. Aries pops right back up and drives the elbow to the midsection. Only able to get two. Toxic Kerr again right there with the count. And McGinnis able to kick out. Austin Aries definitely using his speed to his advantage. Guinness with a back elbow catches him coming in. Goes for his trademark headstand in the corner. Aries comes in and instead gets caught. And he got caught in a big way. Two count only. Hard boot to the back and then an elbow driving Aries down to the mat. But McGinnis again only able to get two. Nigel McGinnis once again using that headstand to turn the tide in a match. And you notice too that Austin Aries was pretty close to the ropes with on that two count, but he opted to try to kick out instead of going the easy way out and using the ropes and wasting the rope break. Smart move on Aries, knowing where he is in the ring at all times, but still had enough left in the tank. High impact. Out. High impact on the arm there. And Aries in obvious pain. You see him grabbing at that shoulder. Another two count from McGinnis. Nigel forcing Aries to expend a lot of energy here, kicking out of all these near falls. And now you see he's got that hold locked on, and that's, that's putting some pressure on the shoulder there. He's going right back to work on the arm. He took him down very hard with that maneuver earlier on, slamming his arm to the canvas. We've seen Aries a couple of times grabbing at that shoulder, maybe a chink in the armor of the wrestling machine spotted by Nigel McGinnis here. Aries back to his feet, McGinnis spins him around. As an arm hammerlock and drives him right down to the canvas. Got a shoulder first down to the canvas. Cover. And Aries able to kick out another cover. Boy, you better believe Nigel McGinnis is taking off Aries very seriously as there's another cover attempt. He is going for victory at, at every opportunity. Very wise strategy on the part of McGinnis, forcing Austin Aries to carry the weight of McGinnis and kick out on multiple occasions here. If this match goes on a long time, that's something that's gonna come into play down the line. And this crowd behind Austin Aries, they wanna see history made tonight. One arm throw once again by McGinnis, more damage done to that shoulder of Aries. Almost trying to save himself under that rope. And once again, having to kick out. Now, in a normal match, you better believe Austin Aries is just using the ropes and taking the easy way out. And hold on, he did. And you see maybe those near falls starting to get to Austin Aries, trying to sap some of the strength out of Aries. Is McGinnis with those covers, forcing Aries to use his first rope break. Nigel McGinnis absolutely wearing down Austin Aries. And the former ROH World Champion and current ROH Tag Team Champion is in trouble. Locks that suplex attempt though. And a second time with a go-behind now. But McGinnis drops down as he made his way to the corner and the shoulder of Austin Aries crashes into that bottom turnbuckle. Get a cover. And Aries able to kick out at two, but how much damage has been done to that shoulder? Aries obviously favoring that left shoulder, keeping it close to his body right now. And look at that, I was beginning to admire the job Nigel McGinnis is doing in this, and instead he just stomps the hand of Austin Aries, and now insults with those kicks to the head. Forearm shot to the back, Aries fires back. McGinnis with a forearm to the back, and again Aries tries to fire back. High knee right to the side of the jaw. 
Nigel McGinnis through it. Todd Sinclair is going to get this out of the ropes. Now that's not a rope break, that's an illegal hold. Austin Aries in a lot of pain. Sinclair not calling for the rope break there. It is going to pitch him to the floor. Once again, you have to watch out for the 20 cap. Of course, normally there is no 10 at in the ROH match. But in the pure title matches, you've got a 20 cap on the floor. Aries might be wise to use every bit of that 20 count and try to get some feeling back into that arm. McGinnis, though, is going to go right back after him, pulls him up on the apron by the hair. Going to suplex him back in the hard way. Aries again up and over. And the Saito suplex drops McGinnis right on the back of his neck. That might have saved Austin Aries right there. Austin Aries needs to start mounting some offenses right now. He is in bad shape, that shoulder, that arm is in a lot of pain. Desperation suplex there by Aries. Listen to the impact of those kicks to the chest of McGinnis. And Aries now getting a second win. Reversal by McGinnis. Roaring elbow right on the point of the chin. And he's got some adrenaline going. Power drive elbow connects. But again, the pain on the face of Aries. Cover. Austin Aries might have got caught in the moment there and went for one of his signature moves. And I don't know if that was the best idea as he came up in just as much pain as Nigel's in. Yeah, Aries definitely came out the worst for wear in that exchange. Has the momentum going his way. Reversal by McGinnis. Aries hits the buckles. Follows him in. Aries able to get out of the way. Springboard's back in and connects with the elbow. Once again, though, it looked like he was in pain. Finley roll connects. Austin Aries so explosive. He's going up. He's going for high impact. He knows he can make history right here with this connects. Rock splash nails and cover. Looks oh, so close. McGinnis able to get the shoulder up in the nick of time. Can Austin Aries be the first man to hold every title in ROH? Can he be the first double champion in ROH history? It's all on the line in this one. And both men back to their feet. McGinnis sent to the buckles. Aries follows him in, elevated to the apron, and his leg gets caught right on the top. Oh, that's a rough break right there. Clothesline yeah. from McGinnis. Just about folded Aries in half. Cover by Nigel. And Aries able to make it to the ropes and use yet another rope break. That is his second rope break. He only has one remaining. And if you notice, before the cover, McGinnis moved Aries closer to the ropes to try and entice him to utilize that rope break. Nigel McGinnis. Say what you will about some of his tactics, but he is wrestling a very intelligent match here. But Austin Aries firing back. Chip breaker, but he gets folded in half again with a close line. Two and a half, and again Aries able to kick out. And this Long Island crowd that braved the blizzards of being here are eating this one up, and rightfully so, we are seeing a great wrestling match. And it's getting a little momentum, charging into the corner, and connects with the European uppercut. Nowhere for Aries to go. And there's that hard hitting style. He's going for it. No, Aries somehow gets out. Only able to get two off the jackknife cradle. McGinnis is looking maybe a little bit frustrated there. Nigel McGinnis has done an excellent job in this match of just wearing down Aries, whether it was going for all the pitfall stuff and making Aries kick out, whether it was working on that shoulder and arm. Nigel McGinnis has done everything he can. He's had this match very well scouted, and now he is going for the high impact. It's Aries up by Tower London. He's going for it. It's over if he hits it. High impact nails it. Austin Aries looks out in the corner. Covered by McGinnis. No history made tonight. And, oh, hold on. Aries able to get his foot on the bottom rope and use his last rope break to save himself, maybe just momentarily. 
Yeah, but the, this is a huge development as right now the ropes are in play for Nigel McGuinness. He can come up with any sort of submission uh, using the ropes, but not only that, but the ropes cannot save Austin Aries from a submission hold or a pinfall. A huge advantage right now for the pure champion. Aries blocking the suplex attempt, firing away at the midsection now. McGinnis still puts on the brakes. Neither man able to get the advantage here. Driven face first though by Aries. A desperation move by Austin Aries as he's trying to walk on some sort of submission here, bridging up now. And yes, he just forced Nigel McGinnis to use a rope break. Austin Aries cranking down on the neck of Nigel McGinnis, able to get his foot on the ropes and use his first rope break. It is now three to one. Nigel McGinnis still has two rope breaks available to him if he should need them. And that is a huge, huge advantage, but it looks like Austin Aries is gonna, gonna put an end to this one. He wants the 450, he was signaling for it. Climbing to the top, Austin Aries has McGinnis set up, but McGinnis pops right back up. Forearm to the back, go for the tower, left it again. And again he hits it! And the ropes can't save Aries this time! Cover! Oh, he kicked out! Austin Aries kicked out of the tower one, and unbelievable! Look at the face of Nigel McGinnis! And that is what made Austin Aries the ROH World Champion. That is what makes him one half of the Tag Team Champions. That's what made him a six-month World Champion the best against all opponents. Small package! I thought history was going to be made here. These fans deserve to see it. Oh, McGinnis putting up two fingers. He thought it was three himself for a minute there. Reversal by Aries. McGinnis to the corner. He's trying to handstand. And it backfired on him this time. Ray Buster. Able to get his foot on the bottom rope and utilize another rope break. He is down to one rope break remaining. Aries again signaling for the 450 as he climbs to the top. And again, McGinnis able to make it to his feet. And that's, he's got a submission in the ropes, and that is totally legal. Aries firing away almost in desperation. Headbutt sends McGinnis to the mat. Aries on top. Nails it! He nailed it, and look at the pain on his face, the shoulder crashing to the canvas to cover! McGinnis kicked out! Oh, I thought that we had it. Austin Aries thought that he had it. An incredible offer from the champion, and he's got the submission locked on. Aries has nowhere to go, right on the shoulder. All the pressure and pain on the shoulder and arm. Aries forced to tap. What an effort. Nigel McGinnis, what a great victory as he had this one well scouted out. Nigel McGinnis retains.
place was Armageddon. And Bobby Cruz just announced it. I am the number one contender for the ROH World Championship. So my question, my question is, when do I get my shot, Brian? Come out here and tell me when I get my shot, because obviously I don't have a match tonight. Oh. and kept to myself and kept my mouth shut for way too long. I had to watch as I was passed over for spots that I could have easily taken. Well, with all the chaos that's going on in this company the past couple weeks, I'm taking that as my golden opportunity to step up and take what I want. And that happens to be something you've got, Roderick Strong. And that's your number one contendership to Brian Danielson's ROH world title. So answer me this, Roderick. Are you man enough and confident enough to come out here and put that number one contendership on the line later tonight?
for the bell, signifying the start of this ROH World title matchup as Brian dances defending against Xavier. Well, we knew that anything was possible with this unscripted format, but I never in a million years would have dreamed that Xavier would return to ROH tonight. Prince Nana saying that the embassy has a contract for the world title, of course. This was supposed to be Alex Shelley versus Brian Danielson. Alex Shelley unable to be here tonight due to the snowstorm or the other rumors that his ticket was canceled. But nonetheless, Prince Nana still holding that contract for a world title shot, and he has brought Xavier back for that title shot. Brian Danielson. I'm still in shock right here as you see Prince Nana with apparently the latest hired gun of the embassy, Xavier, in the corner. And I don't know what to say. Xavier, of course, was the second ever ROH champion. He held the belt for six months. And ironically enough, it was at the first unscripted show where he shocked the world with the upset of the year and defeated Loki to become the ROH champion. And, since, and he went on to have a really great six-month title reign, defending the belt successfully against the likes of AJ Styles at Night of the Butcher, Paul London at the first anniversary show and final battle 2002, and Jay Briscoe, among others. Xavier had a very good title reign before eventually falling to Samoa Joe in March of 2003, and now at the beginning of Samoa Joe's legacy here in ROH. But Xavier back tonight. He's back trying to regain his ROH world title. Near fall there on the champ. We haven't seen Xavier since, I believe, early 2004. Out for some time with an injury, making his way back here. The hired gun of Prince Nana, and he just got the taste slapped out of his mouth, courtesy of the best wrestler on the face of the earth. Well, Xavier was part of the original embassy, don't forget. Prince Nana making that offer to him. I believe it was after Final Battle 2003. I don't have any notes prepared because I, I wasn't expecting to see Xavier here tonight. Of course, Xavier and John Walters stealing the show at Final Battle 2003 and one was one of his last ROH matches. And well, that was an impressive feat to steal that show because it included the great Muda, Kazayashi, and Kojima, among others. And the high, Xavier back here in ROH. Prince Nana pulling some strings, getting him here. And I thought we only had one surprise tonight. It was see CM Punk. And, and I'm surprised. Says, What's Brian Danielson doing? Danielson up and over the top with the punch into the floor. Xavier crashing down here in front of the fans in Long Island. Prince Nana there trying to comfort him on the outside. Words of encouragement from the head of the embassy. And you know one thing is that Brian Danielson is a true student of the game. He is normally very well mentally and physically prepared for his matches, but there is no way he could be prepared for Xavier tonight. Yeah, he came in here tonight expecting to wrestle Alex Shelley. Obviously, Xavier was the last person he expected to be facing across the ring from. And look at Xavier, he is in peak physical condition. He definitely hasn't been sitting on the couch and eating potato chips this time off. He is, looks like a well-trained individual. And he shot the world at the first unscripted. Can lightning strike twice? Taking his time getting back into the ring. Of course, Brian Danielson has been an absolutely phenomenal ROH World Champion. Coming off a title victory against the phenomenal AJ Styles at the last show. Brian Danielson has put together quite a title reign, having those open contracts all over the rest of the world, defeating the likes of Mayor Fuji, Steve Carino, Chris Saban, just to name a few. Roderick Strong twice as he alluded to earlier on, the number one contender. Oh, uh, well, you better believe things aren't over between Roderick Strong and Brian Danielson, as we saw a few moments ago. Danielson's gonna have to contend with Strong again. But that's another matter for another time, as right now, Xavier has a hammerlock on. Trying to turn the champ to his back, but Daniels is doing a good job of getting to his knees, alleviating a lot of the pressure in the hole. Tries to snap there his way out. And look at the tenacity of Xavier hanging on to that hammerlock. Lenny, I have to say that we could see the upset of the year once again tonight. Xavier looks great. And you know, they said that he couldn't defeat Loki, and he did. They said he couldn't defeat Paul London, and he did. They said he couldn't defeat AJ Styles, and he could, and he did. Waist lock there by Dragon. Xavier is a big money player, but he gets nailed with that drop kick. Caught right on the point of the jaw, coming off the ropes by Danielson. 
follows him right into the corner, but a reversal by Xavier and Danielson hits the buckles hard. Elevates Xavier over the top to the apron. Forearm shot staggers the champ. Springboard drop kick right to the back, and Danielson goes to the floor. That springboard drop kick really connected. Danielson down after the Katahajime. 
only able to get two, but the challenger in command at this point in the matchup. You gotta wonder if Jimmy Raven's watching on to this one because he has definitely wants that world title belt. He has made that absolutely clear. Danielson firing a chop, and Xavier fires right back. Trading shots. Headbutt from the champ, and Xavier goes down in a heat. This has really been an intense match. Both men very aggressive. Through the legs. European uppercut. Once again, Xavier goes down hard. Danielson staying right on Xavier, sets him up on the top. He likes to utilize that superplex, and he's following him up. All the way to the top, both men perch high above the floor here in Long Island. And a superplex from Danielson. We got a cover. Not quite enough. It's going to take more than that to defeat someone like Xavier. And you know, I mentioned this, Jimmy Ray watching this. You've got to wonder, is CM Punk watching this? I mean, Prince Nana had a lot of nerve to come out earlier and laugh at CM Punk after he got beat down by Adam Pearce. Nana, obviously, with his sights set on the world title right now, but he is not going with CM Punk. Oh, no, he just folded him in half. Oh. Somehow, Brian Danos is kicking out. Both men being very aggressive in this one. German and he hangs on. No, no, he rolls through. Trying to go in the right into something else. The cross arm breaker. Xavier has it locked in right in the center of the ring. The cross arm breaker. The elbow caps are being bent backwards. Danielson trying to turn to his stomach to alleviate some of the pressure and enable himself to make it to the ropes and force the break, which he does. Very nicely done by Brian Danielson, but an effective hold from Xavier. You can tell he's feeling it right now. He knows what it's like to win world title matches. And back to their feet. I believe this is the kiss your ex goodbye. Plants him with it. Nails it. And look at the cockiness of Xavier. That's the Xavier I remember as he is calling for the 450. He says that's it. Oh, we could have a new world champion. What a stunner that would be. Xavier is sending to the top rope. He's about to fly. Danielson moves out of the way. Roaring elbow and a German right on the back of his neck. Cover. But Xavier slips out, but Danielson floats right over, trying to lock in the count of the ring. There it is. He has it hooked. Xavier, can he reach the rope though? And what's this? Oh, it's Jimmy Ray. That's a deep cue. Well, Terry calling for the bell. Jimmy Reeve, the crowd jewel of the embassy, putting the boots to the world champ.
this in the back. I miss Ring of Honor. And I see no reason to not ask Brian Danielson. No, not for a rematch. See, you got a little bit of an idea. See if you follow me where I'm going with this. Brian Danielson and CM Punk. As far as I'm concerned, you hardcore boys are pathetic. You have a shameful need to make something out of yourself in front of a small group of people. And you know there are some people who want to see that stuff. And God bless all of you because the world needs more suckers like you. But as far as I'm concerned, it's going to stay in the peep shows. There's going to be none of it in Ring of Honor. Now, one more thing about my face. I don't view this as a broken tooth. 
I view this as a black eye. A black eye on my face, just like the black eye that you punks have given a sport of professional wrestling by your participation in it. You're pathetic. So you want to play? I've played some power plays before. And you want to have a war? I've got news for you. If I was Terry Funk, right now I'd be saying, my eye. And if I was the American Dream Dusty Rhodes, I'd be saying, payback is hell, daddy. But I'm not. I'm Jim Cornette. I'm the commissioner of Ring of Honor. So what I'm saying is, you want a war? Well, we're going to cause talking suspicion. We're going to give an exhibition. We're going to find out what it's all about. You want a war, dig down in your bunkers and dig into those trenches and get ready, get ready for shock and awe. trying to climb the ladder. Jason Blade trying to solidify a spot and get his first big singles win. And Jimmy Yang looking to get a win streak going after defeating wrestling's hottest free agent, Jay Lethal, at the last event in Cleveland. This match is guaranteed to be very, very quick paced as you have four very quick athletes, high flyers in the ring. Jarrell Clark side headlock controls Azriel right in the center of the ring. Jarrell Clark. He has been turning a lot of heads recently in Full Impact Pro. And he and Azriel actually wrestled in ROH last August at Night of the Grudges 2. And that was a very impressive match. And there I said the quickness coming into play right off the bat. Jarrell Clark springing out of that maneuver and able to take Azriel off his feet. Now putting a lot of pressure on the shoulder and the elbow as he controls the wrist. Azriel works his way back to his feet. A four-corner survival means that tags are necessary. You don't have to use the tag ropes, so the tag ropes are only for straight two-on-two -two tag team matches. 
and also the first fall wins it. That's the important thing. You gotta go for that win all the time. You gotta make sure there's no one around to break up your submission or pinfall attempt. The man who scored the first fall wins the match. And this one could even have ramifications on the top five rankings. Reversal by Clark. Azriel off the ropes and a drop kick connects right on the button by Clark. And a second takes Azriel off his feet. Went for the third, but he springboarded and landed on his feet and then connects with a third drop kick. And an arm drag takes Azriel down. Azriel with an arm drag of his own takes Clark off his feet. Japanese arm drag by Jarrell Clark. Arm drag by Azriel. Both these athletes are so quick. Nip up and both bear in a standstill. They're both trying to make the most of this opportunity because the roster spots are up for grabs tonight. And a big win here could definitely sneak into the top five, especially with so many people missing action tonight. It's all about taking advantage of the opportunities they're giving you. And there you see oh! Wade making an opportunity for himself with a missile drop kick off the top. Did you see Azriel and, and Jarrell Clark's heads collide there? I believe it was Jarrell Clark's forehead, maybe his eye, and, and Azriel's mouth. Oh, that was absolutely nasty. Jason Blade going three quarters of the way across the ring. Forearm shot on Jimmy Yang and brings him in the hard way. I don't know why Todd Sinclair is trying to get these two out of the ring. He needs a tag here. In lieu of the injuries, though, that Azriel and Jarrell Clark might have just suffered, I guess this is the right choice to make. Spinning DDT, planting Yang on top of his head. Todd Sinclair giving Azrael and Jarrell Clark a moment to regain their bearings as he is letting Jason Blade and Jimmy Yang go out in the ring. Giving him a lot of leeway here off the buckles, hard goes Yang. And nails him with the belly to belly. Jason Blade just launched into the turnbuckles by Jimmy Yang. We saw Jimmy Yang make his RH debut back at Joe versus Kobashi in October. Wow, another nice move. Running up the chest of Jason Blade and connects with the super kick. Jimmy Yang looking impressive in his first ROH outings, but unable to get a win. He's going for one here. Jimmy Yang that took a few months off of ROH said he wanted to get in better shape. He wanted to get the ROH shape. That's what he said. And now he's back, and he's back in a big way, scoring a victory over Jay Lethal, who was number one in the top five rankings last month. That arm control, Jason Blade trying to fight his way up to his feet. Yang drives the knee to the side of the face. Sends him off the ropes. Hard elbow knocks him down. Standing moonsault and a cover. Only able to get two, Todd Sinclair right there. Jason Blade, of course, normally teaming with Kid Mikazi after the car got reshuffled tonight, they ended up in singles competition. And Mikazi with a good showing against Ricky Reyes earlier, unable to get the win. Now let's see if Jason Blade can score a big singles win here. Yang with the Muda lock right there, turns right back over and grabs the front face lock. Jimmy Yang, he, you know that he wants to get that win streak going. He wants to be the James Gibson of this year and rise. Okay, he wants to get out of the ashes of sports entertainment and rise up in the environment of ROH where he can show his true skill. Line tag by Azriel as he tags himself into the matchup. Yang straight a little too far in the corner. There you see the rules of this matchup coming into play. Close line takes Jason Blade down hard. Covered by Azriel. Azriel, he has struggled recently. He has looked in his matches, but he's been unable to secure the big victories. And he's a guy whose roster spot might be in danger. I mean, you have to win here in ROH in order to keep getting booked. That rear chin lock on Blade in the center. He's trying to get a burst of energy here, able to make it to his feet. Elbow to the midsection by Blade. Sends Azriel off the ropes. Ducks the clothesline. And plants with a power up, throws him up. Blade able to kick out at two and a half. Jason Blade needs to make a tag and get out of there. As I believe I see some blood coming out of the mouth of Azriel. No doubt coming from that head collision with Terrell Clark earlier. Springboard kick off the second rope. Well, his mouth wasn't busted before, it will be now. Nice blue thunder driver there for a two count from Jason Blade. Yeah, Azriel's mouth has definitely been busted open. Hard to the corner, Blade follows him in and runs into a boot. Azriel out of the corner. Backbreaker. Cover. 
Jarrell Clark not taking any chances, coming in to make the save, and that's the thing about these four corner survivals. You have to make sure no one is around when you go for that pinfall attempt, because they're not gonna let someone get pinned here. There's no elimination, the first ball wins it. That's real off the ropes. Line tag from Jarrell Clark. Power slam, and a running knee to the back of the head. Wade never saw him coming, covered by Clark. Be able to get two. Picks him right back up. Forearm shot and a chop to the chest. Another chop from Clark. Laid off the ropes. Nice spring on the drop kick from Clark. Cover. Jarrell Clark probably has more on the line in this match than anyone. He needs a big victory in order to keep getting blown up from Florida for these ROH shows. Forearm to the back, sends Blade to the ropes, and again sends him off. Quick back elbow takes him down. Another cover by Clark. And you know, that's one thing, is that when certain talent isn't on an ROH show, that just gives the opportunity for more talent to step forward, like we saw B.J. Whitmer earlier tonight trying to take advantage of the opportunity. And this is a chance for someone like a Jarrell Clark, the nice player of kiss to try to steal the show. Another two count from Clark. It is all about making the most of opportunities when they're given to you. Azriel breaking it up. Uh, I don't know what Azriel is trying to accomplish here. He's definitely got Clark's attention. Oh, and a smart move by Azriel. He did that to lure Clark into his corner so he could tag himself in. Yeah, he saw that Jason Blade had been taking some punishment and didn't want to risk the pinfall. Nice elbow there after the power slam. Covered by Azriel. Didn't want to risk Jarrell Clark being able to score the pinfall, so he suckered him into the corner and tagged himself into the match. Very smart move on the part of Azriel. We've seen a lot of intelligent wrestling tonight. For Azriel, for Nigel McGinnis earlier, as Jason Blade right now needs a tag in a bad way. Driving Azriel in the corner and Yang tags himself in. Jason Blade unable to make the tag, but trying to fire away on Yang. Oh, they Showing some hard courage here, big drop kick. Opting to stay in the match and go for a cover. It's gonna take more than that to pin Jimmy Yang. Jason Blade understands even in young tenure here in ROH, you're not gonna win this match up on the apron. But what a victory it would be if he could pin someone like Jimmy Yang, but that's not gonna happen after a close line like that. Jimmy Yang with a cover now. Yang finally free of the shackles of sports entertainment. Can he rise to the top of Ring of Honor? Fire blade into the corner. Hits the buckles hard. Running through. Connects with the leg. Skins the cat right back in. Blade crumples in the corner. Jimmy Yang trying to measure his spot now. Trying to figure out what to do next. So Azriel again trying to lean over and make the tag. Unable to do so. Leaping kick to the back of the neck. Jimmy Yang so explosive with those feet. So dangerous. Of course, Jimmy Yang likes to use the Yang time to polish off his opponents. That's what worked against Jay Lethal. And there you see Azriel able to make the tag. Yang straight again, a little too far to the corner. Once again, Azriel, bloody mouth and all, trying to make the most of an opportunity. Jason Blade is taking some punishment here, but he is still firing away. Up and over goes Azriel, but can Blade capitalize? Uh, I think that Blade has hit that brick wall. He has reached his limit. He needs to get out of this match. That, I guess it was an unassisting slice for red number two right there. That, that was all that Jason Blade had left. Azriel looking to make the tag to Jarrell Clark. And Jimmy Yang gets the tag. Clark ducks the kick. Ducks the clothesline. Clark off the ropes. Boot to the face. Trying to get him up. Can't elevate him. Back body drop, but he lands on his feet. Mule kick, drop kick to the leg. Nicely done by Clark. Coming in with a series of leg drops there. Oh, shooting star press for a two count. Jarrell Clark with a quick flurry on Jimmy Yang. Pulling him all the way to the corner. Going up to the top, he might be looking for the 630. I think we could see it. No, Jarrell Clark taking too much time. Jimmy Yang to his feet. And he connects with that big kick to the face. Jazriel, drop kick to the back, and Yang goes to the floor. 
Scott Sinclair once again losing control in this one. What's Azrael gonna do here? That's the momentum going. Oh, big chop. Baseball slide chop. Watch play. Nice aerial job there from Jason Blade. Wiping out Azrael. Three men on the floor. Jarrell Clark, the only man remaining in the ring. And he can fly too. Springboard moonsault block. Jason Blade crashing to the floor. Looks like Jarrell Clark opting to go for the man who's taking the most punishment in this match. And Jason Blade, a smart move from Clark, but I'm not sure if Blade is legal. I believe Yang and Clark are legal. What do we got here? A twisting springboard sent on. Good for a two count only. Give Jason Blade a lot of credit for kicking out. All the guts in the world, this kid able to kick out time and time again. Chest first to the buckle. Elevate him and lands on his feet. And plants him with the belly to back. Hangs on, but Azriel is perched on top. I don't know if Blade and Clark know about it. Clark got planted face first, Blade with a cover. Double stop from Azriel. And that's gotta be it for Jason Blade. Cover. Todd Sinclair letting it go, counting two. Clark able to kick out. Yang still out on the floor, as is Jason Blade. Chop from Azrael to the chest of Jarrell Clark. Azrael and Jarrell Clark definitely have a good chance for victory now with the two other men out on the floor. What's Jarrell Clark going for here? He's going for the crucifix. Couldn't get him. Azrael puts on the brake, elevates Clark up and over. Springboard's back in. Last train to Clarksville. Beautiful use of the rope by Jerome Clark, too, and we got a cover! Ah, oh, that's what I'm talking about, Jimmy Yang right there to make the save. Wait for the German, Clark lands on his feet, leg lariat. Yango lands on his feet in the corner. Catches Clark with the back elbow. Getting time! Cover! And he got him! Another big win for Jimmy Yang, that's two in a row. situation. Fake the right hand there. Roderick Strong put his hands up to block, but BJ thought better of it and gave him the clean break. Roderick Strong, the new number one in the top five rankings after making Brian Danielson tap in that big tag team match at Tag Wars 2006. It was Strong and Aries defending the belts against Danielson and Lethal. BJ Whipner the next night at Dissension in Cleveland 
broke away from Lacey's Angels by giving Jimmy Jacobs a wrist clutch exploder. And wow, that'll break up any sort of tag team. BJ Whitmer, a former four time ROH tag team champion. Roderick Strong, one half of the current ROH tag team champions. Currently in control of the arm of BJ Whitmer. Whitmer able to make his way back to his feet. Height advantage from BJ Whitmer, a little bit of a leverage advantage. He's able to make his way to the ropes and force the break. Yet another clean break here from Roderick Strong. Two of the hardest hitters you're going to see here in Ring of Honor as well going at it in this matchup. Now you look at both these men, and they didn't have a lot of time to prepare for this match either. Similar to Brian Danielson and Xavier earlier tonight, and Danielson and Xavier came out pretty aggressive with one another. We'll see if Whitmer and Strong take that same uh, technique into this one. It looks like though they're going for a more cautious approach. Feeling each other out here. Robert Strong showing some quickness. BJ Whitmer though, nice car wheel, showing some agility of his own, the big man. Elevates Strong up and over, and he goes to right to the arm. What a day this was for ROH officials. It was one thing after another. The snowstorm, the canceled flights. Oh, I mean, I know I was in the offices all day. I mean, I'm not even supposed to be in the broadcast booth right now. It's supposed to be Dave Brazak. He was unable to make it in because of the snow. Gotta thank the fans that brave just treacherous weather here in New York, making their way out to Long Island to be here. And we gotta tell you, they are witnessing a tremendous event here. Uh, they saw CM Punk and what a special night that's gonna be, and I can't wait for the main event next. We got one more last Punk match here at ROH. Finally able to say his goodbye to the fans of the East Coast. But not before Roderick Strong and BJ Whitmer decide the number one contender of the world title. Hard shoulder tackle down goes Strong. Up and over goes Whitmer. Leapfrog by Strong. And an arm drag takes the big man off his feet. And again, you see the quickness of Roderick Strong coming into play. Roderick Strong looking absolutely awesome. And you want to talk about a guy that's become the breakout star in the last year, it's Roderick Strong. So many big victories under his belt, and we're looking at the guy that could be the next ROH World Champion. He has taken Brian Danielson to the limit on two occasions. The first time he fought Brian Danielson was at this main war on October the 29th. The two fought for about 40 minutes before Brian Danielson Things exploded there. Then they had a rematch one week later at Vendetta. This time, Roderick Strong taking Brian Danielson to almost 50 minutes. Both times it looked like Strong could have won the world titles. Now we got some big chops back and forth. It's those chops that just blistered the chest of Brian Danielson. For about a month, the scars remained on the chest of the champ. Finally, just starting to heal. And it doesn't take much for those blisters to explode again on the chest of Brian Danielson. He might, they might not ever heal. Roderick Strong might have scarred Brian Danielson for life. Hard chop from Whitmer in the corner in a second. He's gonna fire Strong out of the corner. He hits the focus hard. Whitmer charging. Strong out of the way, and another arm drag takes Whitmer off his feet. Smart strategy on the part of Roderick Strong, using his quickness to negate the size advantage of Whitmer, taking him off his feet at every opportunity, and eliminating the height and leverage advantage that he has. And Roderick Strong now in firm control. And he's got a lot on his plate. I mean, this is a guy that currently won after the ROH Tag Team Champions. He's gonna have the Rottweilers coming after him, among other teams. And the Briscoes on their way back. You know, wow, they don't they haven't said what their purpose is, but you know that they gotta have their sights on the ROH tag team titles. First Xavier, now the Briscoes making their way back to Ring of Honor. Nate Blast from the past, all coming back to Ring of Honor. Hard chop from Strong, and Whitmer goes down in a heap. And not only does Ryder Strong have the tag titles to worry about, he's trying to pursue Brian Danielson to become the ROH world champion. Hard scoop and a slam by Strong. Taking his time here, just measuring Whitmer. Driving the knee right across the jaw on a cover. Now something else that I was looking forward to tonight, which due to the snow wasn't supposed to happen, was Matt Seidel showing up. And they are Matt Seidel and AJ Styles going to challenge Strong and Aries for the tag team titles. Matt Seidel, of course, a member of Generation Next alongside Strong and Aries. But AJ Styles has hand-selected him and has a partner to go after the belt. Got to wonder how that's going to go over with the rest of Generation Next. Catches him in an atomic drop, inverted, and a 
forearm shot sends Whitmer to the floor. Strong is absolutely dominating the early going. Whitmer on the floor, strong first inside the ring. Might be looking to fly here. Up and over with the punch, and Whitmer comes crashing down. And it is all Roderick Strong in the early going. Roderick Strong is poised in control. He looks like a man that could become a double champion here on ROE. And what kind of pressure would that be to have to defend the world and tag team titles at the same time? If anybody's up to it, it's got to be a guy like Roderick Strong and another hard chop to the chest of Whitmer, and he felt that one. But he fires back. BJ Whitmer showing some resolve on the floor, but quickly cut off the knee to the midsection and sent crashing to the guard ramp. Fans here in Long Island, supportive of Roderick Strong as he seeks to hang on to the number one contendership to the ROH World Title. And BJ Whitmer looks like he's been busted open. It looks like a little blood there on the forehead, definitely coming from the guardrail. Of course, there's some sharp edges on those guardrails. Warm shots from Strong, picking Whitmer back up. Pitches him back into the ring. Yeah, Paul Turner trying to get both athletes back into the ring. Strong with a cover. Whitmer quickly kicks out. Whitmer has to start mounting some offense soon. And Whitmer's normally all about the offense. Strong drives the knee to the midsection. Butterfly suplex takes him up and over. Another cover. Whitmer again able to kick out. Strong is yet to focus too much of his offense on the back of Whitmer, something you normally see. Again, pitching him out to the floor. Hard boot to the chest. Stomping away on the floor, Whitmer up against the guardrail. And look at those great fans in Long Island. They're just enjoying this action. They're not worried about any sort of blizzard going on. They're just glad to be out of the snow. Big shot. Strong now just stalking Whitmer on the floor. And Whitmer has almost been overwhelmed so far. What's this? Roderick Strong with his own version of the Ole kick. Nowhere for B.J. Whitmer to go. Sitting on the chair up against the guardrail. Roderick Strong just planting the boot right in the side of the face. Well, you know, I thought this match was going to be a lot more competitive. I'll be honest. I think B.J. Whitmer thought so, too. Roderick Strong right now, it looks like he's going to make short work of E.J. Whitmer. Whitmer at this point unable to mount any offense whatsoever here. you got to wonder if Whitmer is wishing that Lacey was in his corner right now. That one right on the temple. Right now, I think all Robert Strong has to do is get Whitmer into the ring and go for one of his backbreakers, and it could be over. Boot to the midsection for Whitmer and a neck breaker on the floor. And that may have turned the tide here. A desperation move from Whitmer who fell hard on the floor too. But he definitely injured strong with that. Whitmer able to make it back to his feet. You know, right now, Roderick Strong, he's not thinking about Matt Seidel and AJ Styles. He's not thinking about the Rob Pollard. He's not thinking about Brian Davis. And he's thinking about that neck that is getting just clicked repeatedly by BJ Whitmer after suffering a neck breaker on the floor. Second win for Whitmer here as he's starting to mount a little bit of offense here for the first time in this matchup. Slamming the face of Roderick Strong into the apron. Strong trying to buy some time and get away from Whitmer who's staying right on him and smartly so. Now we are seeing the hard hitting offense of BJ Whitmer. He is absolutely unleashing it on Roderick Strong. Also seeing the heart of B.J. Whitmer able to absorb so much punishment and still come back. Oh yeah, man. you're right about that, Lenny. You gotta give B.J. Whitmer all the 
Wimmer in the world as we get a cover of the two count. B.J. Wimmer absorbed all the best shots that Roderick Strong could deliver, and now he's on top. Setting him up again, another neck breaker, snapping the neck of Roderick Strong over the shoulder is Whitmer. Cover! And of course, all that does is stop and up, up Roderick Strong for the wrist clutch exploder. And they see Whitmer just driving that knee into the back of the neck while pulling on the chin. Lots of pressure there. Definitely trying to soften Strong up for that exploder. Modified camel clutch, now the full camel clutch here, wrenching back on the chin. Tremendous pressure on the lower back and the neck. Strong able to free his arms and make his way to the ropes and force the break. And that saved Roderick Strong. He was in a world of pain right there. DJ Whitmer, though, relentless in his assault. And now look at that. He's just bending the back of the neck on the ropes. That's illegal, but he's got a five count. Turner right there forcing the break. DJ Whitmer taking advantage there. Taking advantage of that five count. Strong back up. Drives the point of the elbow to the back of the neck. Strong on the knee. Whitmer off the ropes. And again, the forearm driven right to the back of the head. Look at the pain on the face of Strong. Covered by Whitmer. Only able to get two as Strong kicks out. Whitmer getting a little frustrated with the referee's count. Slap to the face. Repeatedly in the corner, slapping Roderick Strong. He's going to fire him out. Strong puts on the brakes. Boot to the midsection. Whitmer's doubled over. Cross body off the ropes. Cover. Nicely done by Strong. We see him using more aerial tactics in this match against the bigger man. Boot to the midsection. Snap suplex. Takes him right over. And that had to charm the neck of Roderick Strong. Cover. Paul Turner right on top of the action. Doing a good job in this one. Whitmer hooked the leg and Strong still able to kick out at two. BJ staying right on top of Roderick Strong here. Snapmare. Drives the point of the elbow to the top of the head and cranks on the rear chin lock. And right now what BJ Whitmer is trying to do is buy himself some more time to recuperate from that earlier beating. Well, wearing down Roderick Strong. Definitely using the strength and size advantage here. Cutting off the oxygen to Roderick Strong and cranking down on the neck at the same time. Forcing Roderick to carry BJ's weight right on the front of the neck. And BJ Whitmer is looking better than ever now. I'll give him all the credit in the world for surviving that assault. As now Strong going making his way to his feet. Whitmer set too soon, sunset flip. Strong gets a two, both men up. Went for the cradle, but he slipped it's out. Gone. Finally, he got him. He was going for the stronghold there, but Whitmer crawls to the ropes and forces the break. And you notice Strong coming off and clutching the neck. And oh, I don't think BJ Whitmer needed a cheap tactic like that. Thumb to the eye and a DDT. BJ Whitmer pulling out all the stops. Trying to get the number one contendership to Brian Anderson World Title. A cover! And Strong gets his foot on the ropes. Right now, BJ Whitmer isn't thinking about Lacey or Jimmy Jacobs. He's thinking about becoming the number one contender. He's thinking about using the Anything Goes Unscripted 2 format to increase his stock here in ROH. Our clubbing forearm blow to the back, right between the shoulder blades. Ram strong by the head, picks it right back up. Scoop with a slam. Whitmer now going to the outside. Trying to make his way to the top. Strong still clutching at the side of his head and neck. Whitmer taking a little too much time, and Strong pops up and drives the forearm to the side of the head of BJ Whitmer. Robert Strong probably saving himself here, but he's going for a superplex, but that's going to jar his own neck. Whitmer fights him off and shoves him to the canvas. And you see each time Strong comes up clutching the neck. What's the big man gonna do? Frog splash, but Strong able to roll out of the way just in the nick of time. Both men down, starting to show the wear and tear as this match rolls on. And we are really getting a classic encounter right here. As who's going to get to their feet first? That man is going to have a huge advantage. That's kind of state the obvious. Strong slumped in the corner. Whitmer up first. 
Charge in the corner, Strong avoids him and fires a chop. Three huge chops. Clothesline takes Whitmer off his feet. Back elbow, Whitmer goes down harder. Roderick Strong now with a second win here. Again, Whitmer off the ropes, drop kick right on the chin. He's got the adrenaline. Too close to the ropes. Hook the leg, but Whitmer able to grab the bottom rope and force the break. Now Strong trying to plan out his next move. We have yet to see him go for any of his backbreakers, and we have yet to see uh, Whitmer go for an exploder. Another wicked knife edge chopped to the chest of BJ Whitmer by Roderick Strong. Hits the corner hard, running forearm for Strong. Half Nelson backbreaker. Cover. And if you notice, Strong came up clutching the neck, and that caused him to pause for a second or two, and that might have been the difference between BJ Whitmer getting pinned. Roderick Strong still feeling the effects of the damage done to the neck early on by BJ Whitmer, trying to fight through the pain. Handful of hair picks Whitmer back up. Another wicked chop. Whitmer puts on the brakes, boot to the midsection, off the ropes he goes. Running boot to the face, Strong goes down. Whitmer off the ropes again, running knee strike. Cover by Whitmer, hooks the leg. Oh, we almost had a new number one contender. Strong digging deep to kick out. Neither man able to give an inch here. BJ Whitmer, he's got to think about going for one of his high impact moves. He's got to want that wrist clutch exploder. Looks like he's going for a vertical suplex here. No, a knee from Strong. He's got him up. Whitmer firing the knees from the shoulders to escape. Move to the midsection. off the power bomb and Strong able to kick out and again clutching at his neck. Rolling to the corner. And Strong might be trying to buy himself some time here. Trying to shake the cobwebs. Oh, that's going to cost more cobwebs right there. Wicked forearm right to the corner. Fires him out. Strong off the buckles hard. Whitmer hesitated coming in and got elevated up and over, but connects with a right hand that rocks Roderick Strong. Again, Whitmer climbing the top, and Strong fires back again. Drop kick right on the button. High elevation there for Roderick Strong. Whitmer's in trouble. Strong follows him up all the way to the top. Oh, this might be more than some brains with an injured neck. Superplex. And if you notice, Strong kept his head up there, protecting his neck, beautifully done. Again, Whitmer able to kick out at two and a half. And now it's Strong with the upper hand. We'll see if he can follow up. Neither man has been able to get a flurry together in this one. Half Nelson again. Whitmer blocks it. Gotta go for that exploder, Lenny. Uh, Roderick Strong is right uh, for the pick in here. His eyes almost uh, rolled in the back of his head there after that Larian. Picking him up is Whitmer. Has him up in the rack. Strong firing away. Up on the shoulders. One bowler for Strong. Off the ropes. Running kick to the face. Handful of hair by Strong. Did he say Gibson driver? Gibson driver it is in a cover. He got him. What a flurry for Roderick Strong. It leads him to victory. He wants Brian Danielson in the world title. A great effort from E.J. Whitmer.
Prince Nana. CM Punk while he's being beaten down. That's right, Pierce was beating down Punk, and Nana, of course, who was involved in that huge feud with Punk in the embassy last year, he was there getting some laughs in, he was enjoying it. As Adam Pierce now in a test of strength with Brian Danielson. Rick 
Greco Roman knuckle lock Pierce down to a knee. The champ having his way with him in the early going. Pierce with a big size advantage and a headbutt to the midsection. Catches the champ off guard. Boots to the midsection by Pierce trying to take control. And a quick arm drag by Adam Pierce. And he controls the arm of the world champ right in the center of the ring. Very nicely done by Pierce on the world champion. Danielson sends Pierce off the ropes. Hard shoulder tackle and the champ goes down hard. Now the question has to be asked, is Pierce a member of the embassy? I, I, we haven't seen any announcements or any indications that the answer is yes. Uh, it looks like we might have a tag team out of circumstance here with Pierce and Jimmy Rave, just like Brian Danielson and CM Punk. They're a tag team of circumstance after the events that unfolded right here tonight. Danielson and Punk really don't really have a lot of history with each other in ROH. They did have one match back in 2004 at Reborn Stage 1, and they had a couple of classics for FIP, particularly Bring the Pain, a two out of three falls match is known as FIP's Epic Encounter. But what we are seeing here is just a match as a result of the unscripted two format, as a result of all the chaos we saw tonight and all the lineup changes due to the snowstorm that's going on right now. And Pierce up and over and caught with a drop kick coming off the ropes. Danielson measured Pierce as he came off the ropes and planted both feet right on the chin. Pierce is going to go to the corner and try and bide some time. And are we going to see it? See a punk back in an ROH ring. Danielson pointing at Punk, the crowd chanting. They want CM Punk in his matchup. They didn't get a chance to say goodbye to Punk when he made his way out of ROH. He's finally getting his chance to say goodbye, and I think it's gonna happen right now. Punk's East Coast farewell, we're finally getting it. There's a tag. CM Punk, of course, has an issue with Adam Pearce after tonight, but he's got a bigger issue with Jimmy Wave. This is one of the biggest feuds of 2005, and it's about to explode again. Rave doesn't look too eager to make the tag, though. There it is, Punk and Rave one more time. Last time these two stepped in the ring back in Chicago with nowhere to run, CM Punk superplexing him off the top of the cage. What a great steel cage match that was. Of course, they are involved in that brutal dog collar match of Manhattan Mayhem. Jimmy Ray blinding CM Punk to end the 30th anniversary celebration week. A lot of history between these two, a lot of great matches. And here we, oh, what's this? Jimmy Ray wants no part of CM Punk. Tags in the big man, Scrap Iron Adam Pierce. And the crowd getting on Pierce and Rave. Punk in the corner conversing with referee Todd Sinclair. I'm just, I can't believe it. CM Punk in an ROH ring. It's so great to see it again. And it was such a, an emotional night at Punk the Final Chapter in Chicago back on August 13th. And it was really such a night that was weighed down with emotion. A lot of tears flowing in the night as Punk makes Jimmy Rave tag in and he's got Jimmy Rave. Brings him in the hard way and Punk is all over Rave. Hip toss and a cover by Punk. Rave kicks out quickly, trying to get away from Punk. Suplex on Rave and another cover by Punk. Rave kicks out before the one count. Drives him back to the corner in the tag to Brian Danielson. Drives a boot to the midsection. And we are seeing a preview of the match that we will witness at the fourth anniversary show, the next event, February 25th, Edison, New Jersey. Jimmy Rave goes for the world title against Brian Danielson. Or chop across the chest. And you better believe Danielson wants a Jimmy Rave. It was Jimmy Rave and Alex Shelley along with Perch Nano laying out Brian Danielson to end the January 14th Hell Freezes Over event. Suplex by Danielson going to the outside. Rave set up in the ring. The champ climbs to the top. Diving head 
but connects right on the chest of Ray for the cover. Here's him to break it up. You have to wonder if Xavier is watching this match. Is Xavier back in Ring of Honor full time? Tremendous showing by Xavier earlier on against the champ. Now Punk grabbing the arm of Jimmy Ray. Punk is here to have fun. The point I was trying to make before, before the action picked up, was that it was such an emotional night. It was so heavy and weighed down. And there were tears flowing all over the place that it, it, it's great to have Punk here in this more relaxed atmosphere, this special night here in Long Island, so that we can have some fun, we can have a joyous farewell to him. And not only that, but just the fact that the fans on the East Coast are able to get some closure on CM Punk's career and witness one more CM Punk match. What a truly special night here at Unscripted 2 in Long Island. I'm glad to be a part of it. Pierce in the corner, Punk putting the boots to Pierce, and now the champ tags back in. And he takes over on Adam Pierce, brings him out of the corner. Hard chop to the chest. I need this win, I need this win. Brings him out of the corner the hard way to the buckle, goes Pierce. Dragon setting him up, running four on nowhere for Pierce to go. And he is on Dream Street in the corner. Snap there by the champ, sets him up in the center of the ring, and drives the boot right between the shoulder blades. You know, and Punk has been doing some great things in Ohio Valley Wrestling. A memorable feud going on right now with Brent Albright. And of course, you can check out those DVDs at ROHWrestling.com. And there's still a lot of great Full Impact Pro shows coming out featuring CM Punk, including a CM Punk Coca Banna match, it's a must see. CM Punk and Samoa Joe tagging up for the first time. Lots of great stuff happening with CM Punk down at FIP. So make sure to check that out at ROHWrestling.com too. Danielson looking to lock in the surfboard here. I think he was yelling some expressions to Punk there as this makeshift tag team. Let's see if we can get some, some good work between the two of them. Danielson having a tough time with the big man, Adam Pierce. Got him up. There he is. And a drop kick from CM Punk connects right on the jaw of Adam Pierce. Jimmy Rave in the ring. Todd Sinclair forces him out of cover. Jimmy Ray with the save. We do have two makeshift tag teams here, so it'll be very interesting to see who's able to work together and if either of these teams have problems. Looks like Danielson and Pump getting some teamwork going here. Double drop kick. Very nicely done. The team of ROH World Champions continues to dominate. Of course, I could sit here and talk about CM Punk's ROH career all night. What an influential, huge, important person he was in the history of ROH. We got a cover now. Driving the forearm across the chin. Didn't hook the leg. Pierce able to kick out. Punk takes control of the arm. He's going to rip it off. See him, Punk, of course. You look back. That's feud against Raven in 2003. That changed the face of ROH. His world title reign. The controversy of death before dishonor three. So much to talk about, but right now Punk's in a bad spot. Sent to the corner, tagged to Raven. Punk goes to the floor. Tries to grab the feet of Jimmy Raven. Does, he's gonna pull him outside with him. Drives him to the guardrail. Wicked knife edge chopped to the chest by Punk. And he makes his way back to the ring. And so far, Punk and Danielson have absolutely been dominating. Let's see if Pierce and Raven get on the same page. They're trying. Pierce, we saw him in a big factor when Necro Butcher tried to invade the shows in the Midwest. And Cleveland at the center, and Adam Pierce putting a pounding on Necro Butcher. Coming to the aid of Jim Cornette. Cornette shaking his hand. Wave in the corner, trying to shake the cobwebs off. Looking down at the chest. A knife edge chopped from Punk on the floor. Wave still feeling the effects of it in the corner there. Taking his time before he hooks it back up. You know, see him pump. That's very good poise from Jimmy Rave. Maybe a year or two, he might have rushed into something. Instead, he's trying to psych out Punk here, taking his time, plotting out his next move, trying to dictate the fate. A better move from Jimmy Rave. You want to talk about vast improvement on the wrestler in the ring over the past year. Jimmy Rave improving by leaps and bounds. You know, you can't stand the embassy. 
but you can't knock what they've done for Jimmy Rave and the improvement he's made in the last year. Well, you have to respect Jimmy Rave's skill, and that's why Jimmy Rave right now is a top contender for the RH World title at number four in the top five rankings. His partner in the embassy, Alex Shelley, number three, just in front of him. Both those men in line for shots at Brian Danielson after winning the trios tournament. A little dissension between them over who's going to get that title shot. But that's another topic for another time because we have CM Punk in the ring. Shoulder tackle, neither man goes down. And Punk with a hard kick to the hamstring knocks Rave down. And again, Rave trying to go to the floor and Punk going right out after him. Now this time, Punk is not going to allow Jimmy Rave to play mind games and dictate the pace as he is just hammering Rave in the aisle way, not giving Rave any time to breathe. Knee to the midsection and another knife edge chop. And now all four men on the outside going at it. Pearson, Punk, Danielson, and Rave on the floor. And Pierce hits the guardrail. We have Danielson and Rave are crawling through the crowd. This one is breaking loose. Don Sinclair is going to have to let it go in a main event like this. We want a winner. Once again, Adam Pierce just driven back first into the steel barricade. And now Pump with his eye on Nana. Rave and Danielson might end up in the snowstorm at this rate. They are balling all over the place. Defense chop again from Punk, and Pierce is feeling the effects. Well, we know Punk isn't afraid to mix it up. We've seen him in some of the most hardcore matches in ROH. And Adam Pierce sure as hell isn't afraid to mix it up. It's Danielson with a handful of Pierce, and one more time, Adam Pierce hits the steal, and now Rave is back in the ring with CM Punk, and he's begging for mercy. You think Punk's gonna get it to him? Oh, he's begging for him to get up is what he's doing. There is no mercy in that steel cage and nowhere to run. Brian Danielson again sending Pierce for the fourth time into the guardrail. Danielson looks like he's having fun out there. He is enjoying it. Oh, now Wade wants to shake. After everything they've been through, he wants to shake CM Punk's hand. Somehow I don't think it's going to happen, Jimmy. What's Danielson going to do? It's going to be good. Punk's just toying with him. <laughs> and Brian Tanson just slapped him across the face. Cover by Punk, only a one count. And this crowd is letting Jimmy Ray hear about it. As Punk takes him into the corner. Charges in, running knee right to the chest and a tag to the champ. Snap Mare out of the corner. Whoa, there's some double team work from Punk and Danielson. Definitely on the same page in this one. Sinclair with a two count, and that had to hurt Jimmy Rave. Stereo kicks from Punk and Danielson on Rave. Rave sends Danielson off the ropes. Pierce drives the knee into the back of Danielson, but gets caught with a fall. Oh, and Rave up from behind. Pierce catching him, taking him into the guardrail. Jimmy Rave from behind, sending the champ to the floor. And Pierce is going to send Danielson to the steer. And that could be the break that Pierce and Jimmy Rave were looking for. And you notice when Pierce rolled Danielson back into the ring, he made sure that it was on their side of the ring. Rave measuring Danielson as he drives the boot to the back. Uh, vicious kicks there. Another one to the back of the head. We are seeing a preview of the next ROH event. And on the next show, it'll be for the world title. And can you imagine what kind of momentum Jimmy Rave could get? As now we have Pierce and Nana just working over Danielson. Rave with a tag to Pierce. And you know, if I'm Jimmy Rave, I might want to think about just trying to hurt Brian Danielson in this match to injure him for that world title battle. You gotta think that that's exactly what is on the mind of the embassy here, trying to soften the champ up. Well, Pierce is gonna do that with a big chop, and there's my game from Jimmy Rave. Jousting Danielson with water. Trying to get in the head of Brian Danielson. Pierce distracting the referee. One thing you can say about Adam Pierce is he's definitely a ring veteran. He knows where he is in that ring of all time. He knows all the mental games to play. Daniel 
Anderson needs to make the tag to CM Punk. Neck breaker from Pierce. Nicely done, and a cover by Pierce. Oh, very lax cover. You're not gonna pin the world champ like that. Pierce is a guy who has definitely made waves here in ROH, but he needs that huge victory. He wants to shoot up the card. He wants to make the most of the opportunity. And that's what Jimmy Raven's doing right now against Brian Davidson. And look at him, look at that punk. Taunting punk as he hooks Danielson for that big suplex. Takes them up and over, covered by Rave. Again, does not hook the leg, only able to get two. Danielson struggling to try and make the tag, and Rave cuts him off and smartly pulls him back to his half of the ring. Well, Danielson's really fighting hard. Pierce able to make the tag and drops the elbow across the back of the neck, and then the laces of the boot raked right across the face of Danielson. Swinging wildly at Jimmy Rave, nobody there, and Pierce now firing away, but the champ firing back. Trying to fight his way out of the corner. But a corning blow from Adam Pierce knocks him down in the corner one more time. Pierce is absolutely vicious, very hard hitting. Provide applied here by Adam Pierce. Effectively cutting the ring in half are Jimmy Raven Adam Pierce. This crowd firmly behind Dragon as Jimmy Rave tags the foot of Pierce. Tries to clear letting that one go. Once again, Rave now cranking down on the neck of Brian Danielson. Jimmy Rave and Adam Pierce controlling the last several minutes of this matchup. Now, Brian Danielson has already had a tough match tonight against Xavier, so he is more worn down than these other individuals. Rave has taken advantage of that fact, but Danielson taking his way to his feet. Fire away with elbows to the midsection on Jimmy Rave. Off the ropes he goes. Back body drop. The champ was up in the lights. Come by Rave. Two count only. And again, smart move on the part of Jimmy Rave. Dragging Danielson back to his corner and allowing Adam Pierce to tag his way into the matchup. And he drives the boot right into the chest of the world champ. Well, if there's one thing that we got to cover, not only, if there's one thing that's been proven with Danielson and CM Punk, it's the fact that they can go the distance, whether it's Brian Danielson going 75 minutes at testing the limits against Austin Aries or CM Punk, and those two legendary one-hour draws against Samoa Joe at World Title Classic and Joe versus Punk, these guys can go the distance. And the 20, 30 minute mark in a matchup, they're just getting warmed up. Danielson to his feet, but he is in the wrong part of town. Trying to fight his way out is the world champ. Elbows and right hands, but he's clotheslined down by Adam Pierce. And another cover by Pierce. Again, only able to get two. Pierce is just such a big opposing force in that ring. What are they, what's he signaling for here? Get some teamwork out of this duo. Maybe looking for the doomsday device here. Rave up top. And they connect! The champ is turned inside out! Cover! Punk makes the save! Wise choice by Punk is trying to fire up Danielson. And once again, there's that aggressiveness of Adam Pierce. Pitches Punk out onto the announce table on the ringside area. One more time, they're gonna set the champ up. Wave climbing the top. Look, Punk's not ready for the tag. Another forearm shot, and Brian Danielson now has to find a way to make the tag. Punk wasn't ready for the tag before Danielson smartly saw it and gave a forearm to Pierce, and now Danielson bobs off some time. Can he get to the corner? Punk's ready, he's got the tag rope. from Punk and a back elbow knocks both men down. Running knee in the corner. Welcome to Chicago, Jimmy Rave. Great to see that in my way to get one last time. Adam Pierce from behind with a double axe handle. He was the legal man. Pierce off the ropes. Elevated up and over to the floor. Punk's got a sight set on Pierce. Yeah, 
suicide dive from Pump, but he's grabbing his ribs as he hit the guardrail. Rave elevated up and over to the seats. What's Danielson going to do? Pump pulled the guardrail out. Senton from Danielson and Raven Pierce are wiped out on the concrete floor. I can't believe Danielson just did that dive. We haven't seen him do that since the Samoa Joe match at the United Express reunion a couple years ago. You see the look of shock even on the face of CM Punk after that move. You know, Danielson told me at, at intermission, he said, keep an eye out uh, for what I'm going to do. I, I'm going to do something I haven't done since 1999. And that was it. Danielson with a dive over the guardrail. Punk trying to bring Pierce back in. Let's see if Punk and Danielson can use his momentum now. We haven't seen Jimmy Rave emerge from the crowd yet. He might be injured. Pierce off the ropes. Up and over Punk. Reversal Punk off the ropes. Sunset flip by Punk. Punk's got it locked in. Pierce is very close to the ropes, but Ray able to make the save instead. And Punk might have had it right there. Punk, of course, lost his last ROH match to Cole Cabana. And there you see a knee to the stomach at Punk the final chapter. Let's see if Punk can finally go out and win it. Forearm shot from Rave on Punk in the corner. Setting Rave, excuse me, Rave setting Punk up on the top. Following him up. Forearm shot from Rave. Maybe this is a little payback for the superplex off the top of the cage and nowhere to run. Man up. Superplex from Rave. And the big splash from Pierce, that might be it. And Danielson makes the save. Well, Pierce has been gaining some recent victories with that Superfly Splash, and after the Superfly, I think that might have been it for Punk. Pierce almost had the biggest point of his career. Danielson picks to the outside. Another knee to the midsection. DDT! Cover by Ray! But he's not the legal man! Great job by Thompson Flair. Tag to Adam Pierce back in. Picks Punk back up. Vertical suplex from Pierce. And a tag to Jimmy Rave. Quick tags on the part of Pierce and Rave. Cover! Punk able to get his arm up at two. And there's that new submission from Jimmy Rave. He made Azrael tap to that and help freeze it over. And there's Pierce to cut off Danielson. Great teamwork from Rave and Pierce. Can Punk hang on? Trying to get to his feet, that would alleviate most of the pressure. Now he's in position for the pass. No, Greetings from Ghana! The pass, whatever it is. Yes. What's Punk doing here? Once again, he's got it locked into the center of the ring. Danielson's got Pierce dragging him out to the floor. And now it's Danielson playing guard. Jimmy Rave, nowhere to go in the center of the ring. Cow mutilation from the champ.
now we got Pierce working over Danielson. It looked like they were going for a double superplex, but Pierce able to break it up. Oh, hold on! Greetings from Ghana, who just played to the champ right on top of his head! Oh, the pedigree. Greetings from Ghana, whatever you call it. Danielson is out. Brian Danielson just got spiked! And you gotta wonder if that happens next show when we have a new world champion. Spybuster on Punk! Running knee strike to the face, CM Punk is in trouble! Covered by Rave! out because Brian Danielson was not going to be able to break it up on, after the greetings from Ghana. There was no way he was going to be able to save Here. CM Punk. He is still down. Here. These Long Island fans 100 behind Here. CM Punk and who can blame him? Punk to the corner, catches Rave coming in. Catches Pierce with a boot. Punk climbing the turnbuckles. Hurricane Rana takes the big man over. And, wow, it looks like Pierce is definitely hurt from that. That was pretty nasty. And right now it's going to be about who can get to their feet first. Punk's going to go for that anaconda fight to the Puffy Plunge. Pierce, maybe that pal driver. And Brian Danielson, he's still down from that green from Ghana. Rave back to his feet though, grabs a hold of Punk. Now he's just slapping the taste, goes for that back fist. Nobody there. Drop kick off the top! Right over the back of CM Punk, the world champ connects on Jimmy Rave. Now Danielson was down for a long time after that greeting from Ghana. Punk to his feet, Rave now up to his feet. Another open hand slap. And this time Rave unable to counter. Oh, slams him face first. Yeah. Night, Jimmy. Anaconda Vice. Pump screaming at an attack, not on the apron. Danielson took care of him. Danielson takes care of Pierce.
there's a snowstorm outside. scheduled to be here tonight who aren't here because of the snow. Wait, 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 wait. But there's one guy who didn't have to be here who gets paid big bucks to be somewhere else and wrestled, not like a WWE wrestler, thank God. I don't have to worry about it, they're not signing me anytime soon. But he came here and wrestled like a Ring of Honor wrestler. differences in the past, but anytime you want to leave uh, the entertainment business and come back to the wrestling business, I will gladly, gladly give you a shot at the most prestigious title in the world. How much other people suck. I think we should give a round of applause for a wrestler who rules. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I leave it to CM Punk. keep you all here while you continue to get snowed in. But instead, maybe I'll try to keep this as short as I possibly can. All right, to hell with that. Where's the one guy that said sellout? Where's he at? Where's he at? Right there. You, you big stupid, could have got your money back, but you didn't because you paid to see me, you dummy. He's 
say we're never gonna come back, and then we come back just to trick big dummies like you. You know, Matt Seidel, I've had a few days to think about this now, 
And, uh, you know, who am I? Who am I to sit here and tell you that you can't go and shoot for the stars? You can't go after Roderick and mine's ROH titles. You see, like, like these kids back here, you know? You're, you're trying to get your opportunity, right? You're trying to make a name for yourself, and I can understand that. So, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to put those belts on the line. There's going to be no more questions asked about it. And take it from me, though, Matt Seidel. Every decision you make comes with consequences. And uh, you're going to face those consequences for your anniversary show. Okay. Sure. Sure.